Residents of Russia's Kursk region who fled from Ukrainian-held Sudza city have held a protest rally. Some 120 residents gathered in front of the regional administration in the city of Kursk and demanded that they are provided with better living conditions and that other residents remaining in the city are evacuated. They also demanded that the regional authorities acknowledge that there is war in Kursk region, stressing that they have been living under war conditions for three months. They rejected the administration representatives' offer to enter the building for negotiations. The residents were accused of holding an illegal protest. It should be recalled that Ukrainian troops launched incursion on Russia's Kursk region on August 6 where they started a military operation. In a short period of time, Ukrainians captured more than 1,300 square kilometers of territory and took control of several residential areas, including the city of Sudza. Hundreds of soldiers of the Russian army were captured. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov on Saturday held bilateral talks with his counterparts from Mali, Central African Republic, Uganda and Cameroon on the sidelines of the Russia-Africa Partnership Summit in Sochi. During his talks with Mali's Foreign Minister Abdoulaye Diop, Lavrov praised the relationship between the two countries. We consider Mali our reliable partner, an important ally on the African continent, and we value our cooperation in the United Nations, he said. Lavrov also used to opportunity to criticize the West for what he called, selectively, applying the Charter of the United Nations. The West wants to selectively, like from a menu, choose the principles of the Charter that are suitable for them at a particular moment in time, while ignoring the others. Ahead of bilateral talks, Lavrov and the Foreign Minister of the Central African Republic, Sylvie Bipotemin, 
signed an agreement on the mutual elimination of visa requirements for holders of diplomatic and service passports between two countries. According to a statement by the Russian Foreign Ministry, the two ministers discussed issues related to the development of friendly relations with a focus on promoting projects in the areas of exploration and development of raw materials, agriculture, healthcare and personnel training. Lavrov also discussed issues of bilateral cooperation with his counterparts from Uganda and Cameroon, Jij Abubakar Odongo and Lejeune Belambela respectively. The first ministerial conference of the Russia-Africa Partnership Forum began on Saturday with two days of talks to be held over the weekend. Forum of Russia-Africa Partnership, uh, which is being convened on the basis of the agreement reached last year at the Russia-Africa Summit in St. Petersburg, where we uh, highly appreciated the participation and interventions of President Museveni. Uh, he was really very vocal, promoting principles of justice, mutual interest, mutual respect in international affairs. When did you arrive? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Уважаемый господин министр, дорогие друзья, конференцию министров иностранных дел. European nations boosted their defenses in response to the annexation of the Crimea Peninsula in 2014 and Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine in 2022, a London-based think tank said Friday, but much remains to be done for them to be ready to face threats from Russia. That's the conclusion of a report released by the International Institute for Strategic Studies. NATO has not just significantly increased its ambitions regarding its deterrence and war-fighting posture, but European members have sought to address critical capability and readiness shortfalls, the report said. Unsurprisingly, however, after decades of neglect and underinvestment, much remains to be done and progress has been mixed. It was released as European leaders, including NATO's Secretary-General Mark Rutte, was reassessing their transatlantic relations in Budapest, Hungary in the hope that Donald Trump's second U.S. presidency will of the strife of his first administration and maintain a strong common stance on Russia. During his election campaign, Trump threatened actions that could have groundbreaking consequences for nations across Europe, from a trade war with the EU to a withdrawal of NATO commitments and a fundamental shift of support for Ukraine in its war with Russia. During his first 2017 to 2021 term, Trump pushed NATO's European members to spend more on defense, up to and beyond 2% of gross domestic product, and to be less reliant on US military cover. In that respect, some progress has been made, with 2024 defense spending by NATO's European member states 50% higher than it was 10 years ago, the report said. But problems remain. The IISS said, naming a lack of stability in public financing that ultimately limits the defense industry's ability to invest with confidence. Moreover, regularity hurdles and application of environmental, social and governance standards will continue to act as barriers to investment, it said. Europe's defense industry managed to increase output of some products after 2022, especially those with high demand from Ukraine, such as air defense and artillery. But European countries also donated their own weapons to Ukraine, including F-16 fighter jets, and remain dependent on the US for some important aspects of their military capability, looking also to Brazil, Israel and South Korea to meet their needs due to a lack of their production capacity. It also warned that many European armies don't have enough military personnel. A lesson learned from Russia's war against Ukraine is that countries need significant troops to engage with and defeat enemy attack but also enough forces to regenerate after combat attrition. By that standard, key European armed forces remain under strength.